First Baptist Church, it's Wednesday night, and I'm glad that you're joining with me tonight for our the last week of our three week, not four week, but three week, I can't talk, three week series of First Baptist Church through the years. As you can see, uh, we are in um, this beautiful sanctuary of ours. Last week we were in our chapel. This week we're here. And we're a place where we gather week in and week out to worship and to praise and to gather together as people of faith. But as we finish up this series, as we think about the shoulders we stand on, the people who have passed down this tradition of faith to us and who have taught us about following Jesus, um, we're going to talk about some highlights, some big, point, big moments in the life of our church from 1950 going forward. A lot of this information was gathered still from Reverend Walker's book it's up to the 60s, the 1960s. Then after the 60s, I had to do a little bit of um, investigating myself, calling around and harassing people, finding out information about this place. So, so 1950, where we left off last week, where we pick up this week. Reverend Bussey was the pastor at the time. We had had this this Bible Institute where this church was training, feeding, and and teaching preachers how to to um, how to be, how to serve. And 1950, it's been going about 12 years. The pastor had been here 12 years. He resigned. He resigned in May of, of 1950, and uh, the, the following week was VBS in June. And sadly, that second day on a Tuesday, he had a heart attack. He had a heart attack, and he passed away the next day. Very hard time in the life of our church. Night, and then that later that year, the church hired a, a Reverend J. Homer Philpott. And, and he, had, he was the pastor for a few years. And during his time there, within a month of the, being there, the church bought an organ, bought a lighted soundboard, and collection plates. The, the bulletin that was handed out during the service, they named it the Baptist Beacon. So they hand out the Baptist Beacon each week. You know, we don't necessarily have a name for our... Um, for our bulletin that we hand out from time to time. In 53, he resigns. And that's, that same year, the church hired a pastor from Valdosta, First Baptist Church down there, um, a Reverend Gibson, T. Baron Gibson. Reverend Gibson uh, was here from 1953. And in 55, there was more construction to the church. Uh, there was a three-story brick building that was built on the, that butted up to where the old choir room is. And the Sunday school classes, nursery, the, 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 it was, it was opened in December of 55. Ray Brooks was a man that supervised this, this building and the church cost about thirty thousand dollars which the church had to pay for that over the years 1955 that same year of the construction that happened the church here its official name became the first baptist church of jasper georgia so that was it came so 1959 reverend gibson retired his notice was until january 60. So the church began a process of January, February, March, April. So only four months. And on April the 1st, 1960, a Reverend Charles O. Walker came and walked among the people and served and pastored the people here. Reverend Walker served over 30 years in this congregation. Saw a lot, saw a lot walked with people through a lot. And not only was he pastor, I am a friend, but he was also a historian, where we get a lot of this information. As you know, he loved the Cherokee. He loved the, uh, and loved telling about um, the land before, um, before the Cherokee left. 1960 is when he came. There was a lot of 
renovations to the, the pastorium where the pastor and family stayed. There was, uh, the porch became a sun porch. There was a basement. There was a pastor study put on, a new furnace. It was one of the, probably the best pastor's home in New, North Georgia, it said. And Reverend Walker reworked some of the yard, some of the shrubs, and put a fence in the backyard. 1961, this place became, the First Baptist Church became part of the Etowah Association. Uh, 1962, then the chapel where the church was still meeting on a regular basis. This building wasn't here yet. The, um, they bought new pews, and the other pews were shared with, with Friendship Baptist Church. 1963, brought in, the church purchased a new organ. Now, until the 1970s, the church had one full-time employee. And, but in 1974, a man named David Stewart was hired by the church to work with youth and music. And over the years, his title was later, later changed from, to music and administration. But David did so much more than that. He was also one who cared and pastored lots of people. I often heard a saying one time that you don't have to, you don't just have to preach to pastor. And that David was one of those folks who um, not just did music, did youth administration, but he also cared and loved the people of this congregation deeply. 1976, I learned was the first YMT. And when I say YMT, y'all know that as People here at this place know that as youth mission trip. And it's not just youth mission trip because many generations will go on this trip. Young, youth, and older parents and older members of the congregation. And this is a, this is a church-wide event because not only there are people that give to these gifts so things can be built. So there's been musicals done in the past. There's been pavilions and concrete poured all different kind of things the church knows how to build and to know how to um to to go out and, and serve in different communities they've gone across the united states they've gone to um they've gone to north carolina south georgia and even alabama so this, this is a special tradition in the life of this church that not just the young get involved, but every age gets involved from the giving of food, finances, time, and labor, all of it. This is a big event. 1990, Walker Hall and Sunday School buildings were built that butted up to where the 1955 construction um, came up, was, was happened, where it was built. And was named, Walker Hall was named after Reverend Walker later on. First Baptist Church began to move during the 90s as a part of the Southern Baptist Convention to the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. And it never, it never left, First Baptist Church has never left the Southern Baptist Convention, but it was began to move into the, what we would say, CBF, Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, over theological issues such as accepting of non-immersed members. So folks who um, grew up Catholic, Methodist, Presbyterian, who were baptized as infants, as infants, we receive their baptism. We don't ask them to be baptized again here. Also, First Baptist Church celebrates women in the diaconate, serving as deacons, and also serving in a ministerial or pastoral women serving in ministerial or pastoral roles. 1997, Reverend Walker retired as from pastor of, of First Baptist Church. Now that didn't mean that he quit caring for people because he was still in the life of the church, continued to walk beside and, and care for and love the people until he passed. So Reverend Walker, even after his retirement, was still a very, um, important, caring, loving soul within the life of this congregation. 2000, the, the pastor's home was moved from up in East Church Street 
to behind the building to where it is now. To tell you a funny story about uh, when they began to talk about moving it, as they began to ask for, who, who wants to help move this? Will Denson thought, hey, I, I haven't, he told me the story, he said, I, I've never moved a house before, and he was interested in doing it, he wanted to do it. So he helped supervise, they hired a few people, and, and he supervised, and, and a group of people, they began to move the house from, the, from one location to another. And to tell you what good of a job they did, there was a Coke can, a full Coke can, that was open on the kitchen table in, in, the, in the pastor's home. And when they moved it, they moved it down the hill. And when they set it down, the Coke was still on top of the kitchen table. Nothing had spilled. And just to show you how precise, careful, what good a job that group of people, you know, Will Denson doing is supervising that, that effort. 2002, the new sanctuary. The new sanctuary, the Sunday school room, new Sunday school rooms on the third floor, and then the priest and library and the preschool and children's area was was built. The um, let's see, 2005, First Baptist Church ordained its 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 first woman as a, as a deacon. 2007, First Baptist Church hired its first female minister um, who she was ordained while she was working here at First Baptist and there were there have been a total of three ordained females that have worked and and served here in the life of First Baptist Church the preschool was also a very important ministry that had also it's also been going since I believe it was the 60s or in the 60s when um when it was when it was when it was established and has been caring for many many children of this community as as a ministry of this church not just kids that have grown up here in church but kids who um who didn't have necessarily a part of this church but this this congregation has loved and cared about 2015 the old um, pastor's home became an office. Used to the church office was over um, in the older building near the chapel in the old choir room. It moved there in 2015. There was a group of men that helped put this together and reno renovate the church office. Bill Stone, Tony Payne, Alvin Young, Frank Morris, Fred Jacks, Bob Baldwin, Jim Garner, Will Denson, and Emmett Housley. And now we've kind of moved into the present time. And during this present time, we've had a lot go on. What, as we, you know, in 20 and 30 and 40 years when they began to write about First Baptist Church, Jasper, Georgia, they're gonna write 2020 and they're gonna write COVID. And it's gonna be a time where they're gonna say COVID, a world pandemic it's Jasper, Georgia, as the wrong as the rest of the world. And it was a time where the physical doors of the church were, um, were closed. Activities um, didn't happen for a while. And we began to do these virtual services um, that we had never done before. So, uh, but even though as we've moved through 2020 and we're into 2021 and we are beginning to crack the door open and and be, we've begun to meet in person again while also having the option of people still watching online this is a unique time that our body has not completely been together during this time we have people uh, worshiping in the sanctuary here but also worshiping at home and so very fragile, very devastating, very hard time in the life of our country, the life of our world, life of our church, and we've had to learn how to, in a way, refly the plane. As we're reflying planes in, 
in, in other industries, in school, we're learning how to do life again. And so it speaks to the power of the people of faith here at First Baptist Church that we are continuing to move forward, we're continuing to crack open the door and learning how to do um, to church. And so we never thought that to do church we would need one of these to, to put a mask on to come into life of the church, but it allows us, as, as keeping one of these on, allows us to be together and be a little bit safer and to continue to worship. And so we continue to write the story of, of the story of, of love that was taught to us by our ancestors of faith. Um, whether we grew up and we've spent our whole life here or whether we've moved in and, and become a part of this congregation. So I um, hope this has been beneficial. I hope that um, you've, you've, en you've enjoyed being a part and learning about the history of First Baptist Church. And um, look forward to seeing you next week.